One of the intangibles I like to look for with players coming out of the draft is who can I see that makes a true professional, somebody who gets it, who's got work ethic, buys into the system, knows his role, and oh, by the way, has an exceptional skill set. I'm going to go to Zay Flowers out of Boston College, who I think fits all of those to a T. He had multiple options to leave BC to go to a bigger school for more money, but you know what he said? He wanted to finish what he started. Played exceptionally well on a team that didn't have great quarterback play. Once he gets into an NFL team with hopefully a much better quarterback, I could see him flourish. And I love his preparation for the NFL draft where he added 11 pounds to his frame that all, and it didn't impact his quickness and speed whatsoever, dropping a 4-4-40 at the combine. This is a player a quarterback can get the ball in his hands. He'll get lots of yaks. Sounds like Antonio Brown without the baggage. Playmaker like Antonio Brown, but a professional mindset. Clemson's had a really nice run of defensive players, and this is just the latest in linebacker Trenton Simpson, who lit up his pro day there at Clemson and really wowed the scouts with his size and athleticism. At 6'3", 225, I'd like to see him put on a little bit more weight. That's the question mark for me. But with a 40 and a half inch vert, you see the explosive power. He's not afraid of contact. He's an underrated tackler. And I could see him being taken off in the mid to late first round. And the comp for me is Jeremiah owosu koromoa who was a second rounder for the Browns, but also an incredible player, playmaker. Trenton Simpson, the one issue I have with him as well that he's got to get under control, a little bit over aggressive when he's going after a ball carrier. But you know what? I'll take a guy who plays with enthusiasm and passion and dial it back just a smidge because he's going to make somebody a find out there on the defensive side of the ball. You know, when we're talking about Ole Miss's defense, it's kind of a punchline to a bad joke. Tavius Robinson, though, was not the punchline of that defense. When it came to disruptive players, he was exactly that. Speed off the edge, has every single move in the book, can get to the quarterback. The problem is sometimes the other offensive linemen do that as well and double teamed him and kind of limited what he can do. The frame needs some work. He's not necessarily where he needs to be to replicate that kind of success at the NFL level, but obviously you're gonna get a lot of time to make that work. A lot of potential in Robinson. I think folks who don't know him should get to know him because I think he can be an all pro player in the NFL. Rasheem Green, guy kind of the same way coming out a few years ago, needed some tweaks, needed some refinement, and it became a star. Stanford cornerback Caillou Blue Kelly has good size and speed for the position. His father, Brian, played 11 seasons in the NFL with both the Buccaneers and the Lions, so he has those bloodlines in his family. Kelly does a good job of communicating in zone and flipping his hips to transition across the field with ease. Ball production was limited as a result of not getting his eyes back to the ball. Kelly is patient and is not afraid to be physical. He is quicker than fast, which supports the notion that he may be better served in a zone-heavy scheme. At the NFL Combine, he ran the 40-yard dash in 4.52 seconds with a 1.49 second 10-yard split. Kelly projects as a steady long-term starter at the next level. We have compared him to former Raiders cornerback Trayvon Mullen. All right, let's jump over to the offensive line position. Andrew Voorhees, uh, the big fella out of USC, 6'6", 310. One of the things the GMs and the scouts around the country uh, really like about him is just his sheer experience. He came in as a true freshman, started his last nine games. He's got 25 starts under his belt. You just don't see that kind of experience level that early in, in most offensive linemen's career. One of the things that you want to see in an improvement, he's a good run blocker. There's no questions about that, but he tends to play hand karate uh, with defensive linemen sometimes. I think the scouts would like to see uh, a little more aggression uh, and allow them to, to blow some defensive linemen off the ball. I think the biggest comp is Robert Hunt of the 2020 draft, but that's everything Andrew Voorhees, USC offensive lineman, probably a third round pick. Keaton Mitchell out of East Carolina at 5'9", 190 pounds, reminds me so much of Jarek McKinnon and what he brings to the table because his first step explosiveness and first step burst is elite. 
not good, not great, elite. He is someone that gets from zero to 60 in an instant and can help you out as a returner, as a receiver, and also as a rusher, a guy that really doesn't need volume out there in the backfield. Now, where he has to get better, when you look at his game, there are times where he tends to get caught making one too many cuts. I know that drives coaches crazy. Just plant your foot in the ground and get up. Phil has to be a little bit more decisive as he makes a jump to the pro level. Travis Bokalek tied in Nebraska, and his comp, Grant Calpatero. A six-year senior, Bokalek will turn 25 in June, making him older than Cole Komet and Pat Fryerman. But at 6'6", 259, he's a huge target who had a career best 20 receptions last season. The former Rutgers transfer shows an ability to find holes in zone coverage and flashes strong hands in contested catch situations, consistently making catches away from his body in traffic. He can struggle as a blogger, and he's not particularly athletic, and he didn't run the 40 of the combine or his pro day, but he's more straight-line player than middle-of-the-field dynamo, and that's okay. Reliability can get you a long way in the league, and every quarterback needs a security blanket on short and intermediate routes. He'll just need to improve as a blocker at the next level. Dante Demas Jr., wide receiver out of Maryland, has some Mac Hollins in his game. Upon first glance, Demas looks like a tight end, and at 6'2", 212 pounds, he's an imposing figure when he lines up outside. He only managed a 4'5", 740 in the combine, and that will be the number that is discussed most in draft rooms around the league. He hasn't quite been the same player since tearing his ACL midway through the 2021 season, because prior to that, there was legit buzz about his playmaking abilities. That said, he's a determined blocker, both near the line of scrimmage and in space, and as a receiver, he has soft hands, consistently catching the ball away from his body. Not surprisingly, he excels at high pointing the ball with both his size and soft hands, and his NFL future may be as a red zone target and possession receiver who excels against his own looks, because he's not going to outrun NFL cornerbacks on vertical routes, and that lack of separation will limit what he'll be able to do at the next level. 